Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to make a box plot in Excel and specifically for Excel version 2011 for the Macintosh computer. If you notice the grades that are here, they are the grades that we've been using in our previous videos. So we're going to work with the same data values. But for our purposes today to make a box plot, I'm actually going to resort them from smallest to largest. And I'm doing that just so that we do not make the mistake of calling quartile 1, quartile 3 later on. So I am going to go to data and take a look at that ribbon. Remember sort is right here and I'm going to sort in ascending order which puts the smallest value on top and the highest value on the bottom. This is not necessary but I do recommend it because it will make things a little bit easier for you in the long run. Now we are ready to go. When you build a box plot remember from your reading that this is based off of a five number summary. So the first thing that we have to do is figure out the minimum value, the quartile 1 value, the median, quartile 3, and the max. Notice also I've done a bit of prep work for this particular example. Up here I have put in height 1, height 2, height 3, bottom whisker, top whisker, and then the formula that we will use to come up with those values. We're going to need that to build our box plot. You don't necessarily need to put in the actual formulas that I've put into column D. However, I've done that for our purposes here. I do recommend that before you go any further, if you have not already, please pause this recording and print out the directions in Module 5 for making a box plot in Excel. There are very specific directions to do this and rather than you having to take notes as you go along, if you follow along with our directions, you'll actually just be able to concentrate on watching me do that. I think that will be easier for you later on when you go back and try to do this on your own. So we're ready to begin now. I've done my prep work. I have my grades in ascending order. I have a spot for my five number summary value. And the first thing that I'm going to do using Excel is find the median of our data set. Remember that when we enter a formula we start off by putting in the equal sign and typing in the word median. As soon as we click on the opening parenthesis the syntax for this particular formula shows up. Rather than typing in all 30 values over here I am just going to left click and drag down the column close my parenthesis and press return. Now I know that my median is between 85 and 86 in my list which falls right here. So to delineate that for us right now I'm not actually going to select these values because I'm going to use them to find quartile 1 and quartile 3. I'm going to click on this cell, click underline, so that I realize even though it's fairly small here I'll realize later when I look at it that the division between the upper half of my data and the lower half of my data is right between 85 and 86. And if I were to actually count these numbers up, I can see that 15 values fall above that little line, 15 values fall below that little line. When that happens and the median is between two values, remember we add the two values right above and right below that line and divide by 2. So if we add 85 and 86 together that gives us 85.5 which makes sense. I also can enter in here my minimum value which is 42 and my maximum value which is 100. Now I need to find quartile 1 and quartile 3. Quartile 1 is the median of the upper half. So I want to split that upper half in half. And whenever I take one half and take half of that, I actually have one quarter, which is where the word quartile comes from. So I know I have 15 data values up here, which means the halfway point in that upper half would be data value number 8. So if I count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I find that if I highlight this, and I'm going to do that just to make it easier to see here, I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 values above the 78 and 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven values below the 78. So I'm going to enter 78 into quartile 1. A word of caution here. Excel does have a quartile function. You do not want to use it. Excel finds quartiles based on percentiles, so it would be looking for the 25th percentile. That is not the same as taking the median of the upper half of the data values. The value that Excel gives you will be close, but it will not be exactly what you're looking for. You can find quartile 1 and quartile 3 using your TI-30 calculator, and I will show you in a moment how to do that. But for now, this data set is small enough so that we can actually find our quartiles by hand. Now we're going to look at the lower half of our numbers here, which are actually the upper half of our data values. And once again, we have 15 data values below that little line that we placed to denote our median, which means if I count down 8 and highlight that, I should have exactly 7 data values above that up to the median and seven data values below that. So notice also that when we did this we counted the maximum as one of our values. So I'm now going to enter 91 in here. I have a successful five number summary. Now this is probably a good spot to show you how to actually do that using your calculator. So I'm going to pop the calculator up here. Here's our TI-30. I did do a little bit of prep work to get us going. I have already put our 30 data values into the calculator. When you go to do this, you'll want to click on data and you can see that my data values are already here. And I did this before I reordered them so I started at 100 and worked my way down. But basically you're going to see a blank screen and when you do that, enter your data values. Put in the 100, press enter, then put in the next data value, which for me was 96. Press enter again and keep going until you have all 30 data values in there. Once they are all in your list, then we want to do a statistical analysis. And notice the stat key is right above the data key. I am going to do second data, which activates the stat. This is one variable statistics. I only put in one list of data values. So I'm going to press enter for that. I do want it to come from list one. Every value I only want counted once. That's what the frequency stands for. So I'm going to down arrow until the calc starts blinking and then I'm going to press enter. When I do that, it gives me a number of statistics for this particular data set. The mean, if I wanted it, was 83.06 repeating. I didn't need that. The next two have to do with standard deviation, which we will get to later. I'm going to scroll all the way down until I see the min appear. Notice the minimum of our data set was 42. That corresponds with what we entered. The quartile 1 value is 78. If I down click again, the median is 85.5, quartile 3 is 91, and the max is 100. So you can use your TI-30 to find your quartiles. You have to have the most recent version. You need the multi-view to do that, but that will find those particular values. Also, if you have a graphing calculator, the graphing calculator also calculates correctly the five number summary. All right, now that we've verified our data values, let's go back to our screen. We are ready to start creating our box plot. Before we can do that, we are going to go up to the top here and in column E, I'm actually going to enter what these values are. So quartile one, we know from before is 78, so I'm going to type a 78 in there. Height 2 actually is found by taking the median, which was 85.5, and subtracting from that quartile 1. That gives us a height of 7.5, so I'm going to enter that. In the next cell, we need to take our quartile 3 value of 91 and subtract the median from that, 91 minus 85.5 equals 5.5. I'm going to type that in there. The bottom whisker of our box plot is found by taking quartile 1 and subtracting our minimum value 78 minus 42 gives us 36. Then finally the top whisker 
is found by taking the maximum value and subtracting quartile 3, 100 minus 91, which gives us a height of 9. That basically is telling us that the top whisker is going to be 9 units above our box and the bottom whisker is going to be 36 units. It's going to extend 36 units below the bottom box. So now we're ready to actually create this. Box plots, which are sometimes called box and whisker plots because they are actually made from a box, a rectangle, with two whiskers, is created in Excel by using a stacked column. So for this next step, we are going to select the top three values, height 1, height 2, and height 3. Then we are going to go to Chart and click on Column. We're going to take Stacked Column as our option here. When I do that, notice that doesn't look at all like a box plot. So we have to switch things around a little bit. With our chart selected and with the Charts tab open, which it should automatically be unless you've left it and come back to it, we are now going to go to Switch Plot. Notice the moment that I do that, I have created now a column that looks stacked. It doesn't look anything like what we want our box and whisker plot to end up looking like for our final submission. However, we actually are on our way. If you look at the top two rectangles, you will see that you have a value up here. This top green rectangle ends a little bit over 90. That's actually the quartile 3 value. And if you look at the line that's formed in between the red and the lime green rectangles, you will see that that's a little bit more than 85. It's actually 85 and a half. That corresponds to our median. And then quartile 1, which is a 78, actually shows up right about here. What we've actually done is we have created a box that is 78 units high. And then we have added a height onto that to bring us to our median. By adding that 7.5, we actually increased the value of this rectangle up to 85.5. So we're building our box plot in a slightly unusual way, but in the end it works out. Eventually we're going to get rid of this bottom rectangle because the red and the green are actually the box part of the box plot. So now we're ready to add our whiskers. To add the bottom whisker, we're going to select the bottom rectangle in the 3 stack by just clicking on it anywhere within the rectangle. Then in the Chart Layout tab, we are going to select Error Bars. We want Error Bar Options. Notice when we do that, a table appears for us. We are going to click on Minus cap, which is the default, so we don't have to worry about that, and specify value. So we have to click on custom and then we can click on specify value. To add our top whisker, we're not going to pay attention to the positive error value for this one. Because we're adding our bottom whisker, we want a negative error value. So we're going to go down to that one and clear out what's there and type in our bottom whisker value from over here which is 36. And then click OK. Notice when we did that, we have a bottom whisker extending down to almost 40. And that is our minimum value. Now we can go ahead and actually get rid of that bottom rectangle. To do that, I can just click on it. Now that the bottom rectangle has been selected, the one thing that I do not want to do is delete it. That will get rid of the whole thing and creates a situation that you do not want. We really just want to make it invisible. So I'm going to do that. I'm in the Format tab already by going to Fill and select No Fill and Line and select No Line. It still looks like the line is there, but once I click off of it, you'll see that it's very, very light so you can't see it at this point. So now we actually have a bottom whisker on our box plot and we need to add the top whisker. To do that we're going to select the top rectangle 
go back to chart layout, go over to error bars, just like we did before, error bar options. This time we want the plus arrow. We still want the cap on it, so we're going to leave that. We want to put in our own value, and we're going to get that value by going over here, going over to top whisker, which is 9, and that is what we're going to type into our chart. Click OK, and then OK again, and notice we have our top whisker. As soon as we click off of that, the little dots surrounding it disappear, and we have a very nice box and whisker plot. We do not need the Series 1, Series 2, Series 3 information that's in the legend, so we can delete that. We certainly would like to put a title on our particular box and whisker plot. So we're going to go back to Chart Layout and Chart Title, and I'm going to type in Exam Grids. We have now created our box and whisker plot. If we want to make it larger, we can just grab onto a corner and extend it so that you can see it quite nicely. Don't forget before you submit your project to go down to Sheet 1, double click on it, and put in what this refers to. In this particular case, I will just label it Exam Grades. And you are good to go. I hope you have found this screencast helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions at all.